What's up everybody? Welcome to BioS3 Raw TV. Well tonight we're going to look at something that aggravates the shit out of me and here's the problem that I have. There are many people out there that um, will go by what they read online, what they read in a book, what studies, etc, etc. And they'll go by fact and they'll argue with the fact that they know what's going on based on what they've read when they've never even tried something. Like they've never given an actual try themselves, they have no idea. And that is we've seen many times people be able to eat more calories on keto than they are on a regular carb-based diet. Now, all the calories in, calories out crew, they flip their fucking shit talking about it. it's all about calories, it's all about this, it's all about literally breaking it down to like the simplest terms. And they say keto is not magic. I agree, keto is not magic. It's another tool in the toolbox. However, I've seen many people that don't have success with regular diets have good success with keto diets. Now, why would that be? Now, maybe the keto diet was just fitted more suited for their their body chemistry or whatever the case may be, but as a general rule of thumb, every person when they actually switched from, and they, I'm going to go over the studies and stuff that they actually talk about this in this um, this article, and there are many studies out there that say that keto does not help you burn more fat, keto does not have burn more calories per day, you cannot eat more calories on keto diet, however, there's just as many actual studies and real world data saying that you can eat more calories and you do burn more body fat. Now, that's another thing I want to get to also that many of the studies talk about fat burned and they're not talking about body fat burned. So there is there is two different things going on there too. If you're burning the fat that you're ingesting, fine, that's one thing. But realistically, if we're dieting, we want to burn more fat off of our body. That's the whole goal, right? So keto is something that I learned about in about 1994, around there. Um, I didn't know anything about the Atkins diet or any of that shit like back then. But what I did know was the Optimum Training Systems program, which came out with the anabolic diet, which was Moro Pasquale's diet, which was a takeoff of, or not a takeoff, but a, a new type of five on, two off diet, which was five keto, two high carb days. It was a cyclo-ketogenic diet, not necessarily just a ketogenic diet. Now, that being said, one of the biggest um, things that they have that says does increase calorie expenditure is protein. They're saying the more protein you eat, the more calorie expenditure you have throughout the day. Now, if you remove one of those macronutrients, carbs, proteins, or fat, let's say you remove carbohydrates, you have to make up that difference. Now, the study that I'm going to look at, I'm going to talk about now, had 15% of the calories in carbs and 15% of the calories in keto. They never changed the protein. It was always 15% was protein. Now, for me, when I look at that, I go, well, shit, if I'm doing keto, I look at my calories and my in, in my macros, I'm going to adjust my fat and protein macros. Like I'm not going to reduce my protein macros and increase the fat so much that I'm going to be eating the similar or less. I'm probably going to be eating more protein and less fats than what these studies actually had, which changes the whole scope of how this works and why there is such a disconnect because the studies that they're doing is on an 85% fat diet and 15% fat Protein. Sorry, 85% fat, 15% protein. I don't know one single bodybuilder out there that that's the ratios that they use. I know that most of them are roughly 70 and 30. It's 30% protein, 70% um, fats, and they kind of fill in the carbs with whatever fiber they get throughout the day, which is basically green vegetables. Now, that being said, I'm not sure why people get such a hard on. The, the, the calories in, calories out crew, they get such a hard on for things other than eat everything you want all the fucking time and count the calories. Like they make it seem like it's just calorie counting, but here's the problem. About 85% of people fail when they just count calories. 85%, so there's a 15% success rate. And even after that, there's about a 5% success rate that over six months after they're, they've gotten to their goal weight that they actually keep that weight off. So after six months, there's a 5% success rate and we've seen much higher success rates with a keto diet. So for anybody to say that it's not, you know, it's not good, it's this, it's bad, it's evil, it's like, well, more people are actually getting success long-term on the keto diet than are actually eating a regular carb-based diet. Matter of fact, a lot of these, um, these obesity clinics, when they go to have um, lap band surgery and things like that, they don't just remove calories. Back in the day, it was just calories. Now they actually tell you, we don't want you to eat high-carbohydrate diets. They tell them that they want them to eat different meats and they want them to eat vegetables. They don't want them to eat starchy carbohydrates. They want all that shit eliminated and they drop the calories at the same time. So they eliminate the carbohydrate source to get somebody to drop body weight who's obese. So even that aspect of medicine and, um, and science has caught up to the point where they realize if they lose, remove carbohydrates, even though they still put them on the same calories, when they remove carbohydrates, they can eat those amount of calories keto-wise and they'll still lose the weight faster. 
and it helps with appetite and helps all there's so many other things that keto helps with because hormonally it does change your body now let's just run through these studies i want to read these things for you because it really does make you just think and my thing is like i'm not i don't not telling you to do keto i'm not telling you to do high carb i'm telling you to think use a little bit of logic think and stop listening to people that have an agenda i have zero agenda for the keto diet do i use it yeah am i on it all the time no i don't sell any keto diets I don't run around there putting everybody on a fucking keto diet. I mean, I'm not the keto guy. I'm the diet guy. But keto absolutely is a tool that is not evil. It's not bad. It doesn't fucking put you in bad health. But if you listen to these IFWMers that think you should be eating pixie sticks for one of your fucking meals, they're going to tell you it's fucking terrible. Hang on. Let's just think so. Listen. Um, the ketogenic diet caused a slight increase in calorie expenditure. This is a, talking about this study, right? I should actually go to the beginning of the study rather than halfway down this thing. So let me go to the... Um, this point over here where it says um, the ketogenic diet is usually much higher in protein than a normal Western diet. As a result, it may help people lose weight. Now, just by, you know, talking about the higher protein um, says, however, it's unclear if the weight loss benefits from the ketogenic diet are merely due to increased protein intake or if it improves body composition and caloric expenditure irrespective of its protein content. For this reason, a study examined the changes in caloric expenditure and weight loss when switching from a high carb diet to a low carb diet, ketogenic diet, while keeping protein constant. Um, so they talk about basically, um, and there's like a, just a lot of stuff that really we don't even care. It talks about excessive amounts of sugar is linked with an increase of obesity. Um, sugar contains no more calories than protein or complex. It, it has a lot of information that I think the general public just really doesn't know. So it was a two month study examined how switching from a high carb diet to a low carb diet, um, high fat diet changes, caloric expenditure and body composition, 17 individuals, 18 to 50, um, with a body mass index ranging from 25 to 35, um, Study two sections, um, successive four-week periods, baseline diet, ketogenic diet. Um, so it talks about the high-carb diet with 50% of calories from carbs, 25% from sugar, 35% from fat, and 15% from protein was the baseline diet. The ketogenic diet was a high-fat diet providing 80% of calories from fat, 15% protein, and 5% carbs. So right off the bat, I'm looking at this going again. This is very like an old, old-school type diet where they're talking about like 80% of the calories coming from fat and they're not talking about whether or not it's saturated fats or poly and monounsaturated. Now that also plays a big role into how fast your body burns fat and how efficient your body is. The more saturated fat you've ha you have, which is solid fat, slows down the digestion, is much harder for the body to use. Therefore, results come slower because the digestion is not as fast, it's not as efficient or easy for your body to use. Throughout the studies, participants were confined to a medical ward, which means that they didn't leave the fucking ward. So they were actually there, control everything was controlled, right? Um, all the food is prepared in the kitchen. Both diets contain minimal amounts of processed foods and added sugar. Um, researchers adjust participants' caloric intake so they would be in neutral energy balance, maintaining their body weight. Um, da, 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 increasing protein expenditure. Um, the protein was kept at 15% of total calories, so that wouldn't be a uh, deterrent. Um, they used a respiratory quote when they used calorie expenditure, body weight, body composition, protein use, insulin formation. They used all these types of things. And what they found was... Let me get to this next piece. Um, there was a sudden drop in body weight, three to three pounds, uh, three pound, three point five pounds, or one point six kilograms, likely caused by water, water weight. But then it stabilized after that. But get this: um, going on the ketogenic diet caused a slight increase in caloric expenditure. This amounted to approximately a hundred calories per day. Now, hundred calories may not seem like much to you, but if you're already in a deficit, or let's say you're you're at maintenance and you think that you're at maintenance, but you're 100 calories over or under, that makes a difference whether your body's losing or gaining weight. This one automatically gives you 100 calories extra that you can consume per day. Now, again, it may not seem like a lot, but that completely contradicts what every one of these IFOMers say that it doesn't do that. Even 100 calories, well, it's not a big deal, but that, that fact that 100 calories more expended per day just by switching diets, no matter how long it lasts, means that there is something happening in the body and they're not even sure what it is, metabolically that changes when you change those macros. Do we know what it is? They don't talk about it. So I don't know if they figured it out, but the fact that they even put it in there, they're not hiding it. These scientists really want to know what the fuck is going on. But this actually proves, again, everything was controlled as can be. There was a 100, 100 calorie expenditure that increased just from switching diets. Now throw in your cardio daily, right? Throw in a, a slight caloric deficit. Instead of having to go 250 calories in a deficit, you can go 150 calories in deficit because you automatically have an expenditure. So automatically you're able to eat more and lose weight still at the same rate as the high carb diet. And this study talks about it. Now, the problem I have is this is a study that they'll go, oh, no, no. Or they'll pick it apart. They'll find some other shit. But they'll also say stuff like, well, all these studies over here say that that doesn't happen. But there's just as many studies that say it does happen. So here's the problem. If, um, okay, so these eye drops. If I say these eye drops, I keep going to luminify eye drops because it's just on my desk, right? 
I don't have to really go out there and say anything about these things working, right? You know why? Because they fucking work. They turn your eyes white. So there's no people out there say, well, I put in my eyes and they did turn white. I put in my eyes and they didn't turn white. They turn your eyes white every fucking time. That's just how it is, how it works. How it works, I don't know, but that's how that works. Now, if a keto diet really didn't cause any caloric expenditure increase just by switching diets, there would be no data saying that. There would be no individual saying that. When the truth about something is out there, it's multiple people over multiple sources over multiple periods of time that are saying that, which means there's some type of phenomena happening that science just doesn't understand yet. And because they don't understand it, true, actual, real scientists go, that's interesting, it needs further looking into. These quasi-quack motherfuckers that are trying to get you to believe that they believe in science are so one-sided, they take all those studies out that actually say that you do burn more calories and you can eat more calories than keto and do away with them because they try to find things wrong with them. But the people that believe in that could do the same thing to the people, to those wing nuts. They could say, look, all your fucking things over here are flawed because they can literally, each side could pick them apart. But the bottom line is there's data showing both. So if there's data showing both and there's multiple sources over years, that means something's fucking happening. I just say, hey, it's a tool in the toolbox. I know when to use it. I know when to use it with my clients. It is what it is. No, it's not magic, but it is a tool in the toolbox. And I have personally witnessed on my own physique and other people be able to eat two or 300 more calories per day on a keto diet. And matter of fact, Mauro Di Pasquale's book, Mauro Di Pasquale talked about, he's seen people eat up to four to 500 more calories on that diet. He said he's had people that were bigger, that were really big muscle wise, that could eat a thousand more calories on that diet. He was talking about this back in 1994. And all of a sudden, you know, not 2019, people are like, oh, it doesn't happen. It's like, but we've seen it happen. And it's been documented throughout the years. So why the fuck? I don't, I don't understand. I have a hard time grasping the concept that people like the IF Whammers and the people that are calories in, calories out, they say that they want to help. They just want to help and put information out there. Well, why don't you give everybody all of the information? Why don't you stop trying to be right and start trying to help? There's a big difference between wanting to help and being right. Who the fuck cares about who's right if the goddamn shit works? It doesn't fucking matter. Like, I have got my head pounded in for years and years and years, and I still fight back, not about being right, but about being literally, I talked to an individual named Scott today, right? What's up, Scott? We had a Skype earlier today. It's Sunday. And he talked about how just my videos, he used just the videos that I put out there, didn't, didn't hire me and none of that stuff, used my videos and lost 100 pounds just using my videos. Half the shit in those videos people would say doesn't work. Half the shit in those videos people made fun of me for. Half the shit in those videos people fucking said I was stupid, I was not a scientist, I'm not, all this shit, no, I'm not a scientist, but they would say that I'm so full of shit, it's bullshit. However, he lost 100 pounds. How many people look at these IF whammers and follow them, lose 100 pounds just from using their videos and not hiring them? Very, very few. So the information I'm trying to put out there is fucking free, but I want you guys to think. I want you guys to use logic. Hashtag Jerry logic. There it is again. Use logic. If there's a lot of people saying something about keto and people really love it and they use it and they live by it, what the fuck is anybody to say that they're wrong? That motherfucker dropped, I'm not saying Scott, but those motherfuckers drop all kinds of body fat and literally live on keto their entire life because they feel better on it. And you'll have people say that it's evil, it's bad for you, it will kill you. I have, I mean, it blows my mind of the scare tactics that IF whammers and, and people that do calories in, calories out, that they will use to try to get people to discredit everything that's going on besides what they say so they can captivate an audience, feel better about themselves, feel powerful because people are listening to them and they have all the power, they have all the information. They'll do anything to discredit them, including say that those studies don't count because what the fuck? So your studies count? Your studies were done by the fucking Kellogg's company. Your studies were done by the craft company, by the food companies that produce those foods in high amounts that they want to sell that tells you that fucking eating more of those won't make you fat. They literally go by the data by companies that fill their fucking food with chemicals and then put out stuff that says the chemicals are fine. They're literally backing people that don't give a fuck about harming people, don't want anybody to know the truth, and don't give a fuck about you losing weight or helping you get healthier. They're backing them because they want to be right. Because those big companies like Kellogg's and shit that put that information out, they want to be part of that fucking machine that gives them power. We're right because the fucking scientist said this. Well, this scientist said that. Well, he's a quack. Well, what the fuck? This guy over here got paid by that company to get those fucking results. I'm not saying that's fucking right or wrong. I'm just saying that's a fact. So I look at it and say, this company says this. Let me try that for fucking 12 weeks. Okay, now we're here. Let me try this for 12 weeks. Okay, fine. Now we're here. Let me try that for 12 weeks. Let me try this for 12 weeks. Let me try this for 12 weeks. That's the difference between me and them. 
I've literally left, lived my whole fucking life seeking information. Not because I thought I could even make a fucking dime at it. There was no social media when I was doing it. There was no reward other than me knowing the knowledge, being able to apply it to my physique and hand it off to other individuals to get them to their goals that I knew. I wasn't even training people at the time. I was absorbing information from everywhere and literally taking that information, going in the gym and applying it. Nowadays, what they do is they read it and they go, oh, this is fact. Have you fucking tried that? No. We got people talking shit about a keto diet that have never done it. How the fuck do you know that that doesn't work if you've never done it? Because a study said so? Well, another study says it does. So now it's up to you to take your balls out of your pocket, get out there and actually try it and stop being one of these, well, I don't want to waste time because science says waste time. How the fuck do you think science figured this shit out? By doing a fucking study, by doing experiments. How the fuck do you think you're going to figure out because there's two studies telling you fucking two different things, which one's actually real? We saw, we saw the actual practical application of fucking Ian McCarthy doing his science getting almost zero fucking results for him. I mean, don't get me wrong. He looked a little bit better, but anybody who picks up a fucking weight and doesn't know shit will get just the same results that he got. People that he worked with, same shit, subpar results. And this motherfucker could quote every fucking study, every everything. He knew all the fucking science. We saw fucking subpar minimal results as opposed to the individuals out there that don't really know. They say, okay, I read this. Let me go try this and apply this. Well, this doesn't work. What Ian said doesn't fucking work. Fuck this. Let me try this. Well, that works. Well, Ian said this doesn't work. I'm going to fucking do this anyways. Like, it was very clear that when this shit started coming around a few years ago, we're talking probably 2013, 12, uh, 2012, 2013, when these science guys started coming out fucking yapping their mouths, that very quickly everybody said, oh my God, the science. They started following these people and doing what they said and realized they were getting subpar results. In 2019, it's not about the studies anymore. Those individuals citing the studies, talking about science, have literally lost part of their following because it didn't work and people realized it. They realized that some kind of bullshit was going on and they realized that there's no one size fits all. Then you can't say calories counting is fucking successful because fucking 95% of people long term fail. If that was the key and it was so fucking simple, people would be able to do it. But you're talking to people that can't do it because it's not the be all end all. If you taught them to count macros, macros will go so much farther than the fucking calories because you can man manipulate each individual macro to get your body to respond as opposed to just manipulating some fucking weird calories. Keto is just that, manipulating your macros. I personally recommend a little bit higher protein, a little bit lower fats, polyamonounsaturated fats. I guarantee fucking tea. If you do your keto diet like that, you're going to be blown away with the results. You're going to be like, holy fucking shit. And that's a freebie from me to you guys. You'll be like, holy fuck, those assholes talking shit about the ketogenic diet were wrong. No, it's not magic, but it's working really well for me. So in closing, guys, everything you read about a study, there's something else fucking citing that it's fucking, it's not true. It's, it's the opposite. And I kind of look at, are there more things saying this and less things saying this? Are they equal? Is there more saying this and less saying this? When that shit's equal, that makes me start thinking. I'm like, wait a minute. If this if this 600 study says this and there's one over here, I'm like, Eh, genetic outlier, fucking something didn't went wrong in the study. Two or three, eh, not 10. I'm like, hmm, 10 people, that's kind of interesting. When you got fucking thousands of studies or hundreds of studies here and hundreds of studies here, or 50 here and 50 here, or 10 here and 10 here, whatever, but if they're fucking matching, something else is going on. You can't just fucking deny logic because you just deem the science people more, more intelligent. They speak better, they don't swear, they wear a lab coat, they comb their hair better, they wear glasses, they fucking, whatever the case may be. Right? They know how to say big words. They know how to pronounce shit right. Well, you can pronounce everything you want right, and I'll do a fucking ketogenic diet and still get ripped to fuck and walk in and go, this is what this did for me. And then I'll have that guy over here saying, well, that's impossible because science says, what the fuck, science? You know what? I wish I could hang out with science for a fucking day. I wish me and science could hang out. We just shoot the shit because science himself, you guys, this is funny. Science himself would be fucking appalled with what these assholes are saying about him. Science itself would be fucking rip shit because these assholes are bending it and making something it's not and trying to make themselves powerful and look better and make money off something that science was never fucking created to do. Science was created for information. If you have information saying the ketogenic diet works, you cannot refute that and say some kind of bullshit because you have another study saying it doesn't. If you truly go by the science and you are not picking one side or the other based on your agenda, then you have to take all sides, which means all the studies. Brian, the gorilla chemist, is perfect with this. He does an amazing job of taking all this information, putting it together and seeing, hmm, some of it says this, some of it says that. Fuck it, I'm just going to try it and see what happens. Then he tries it three, four, five times and says, well, twice it did this, three times it did that. It can work both ways. But if I tweak this, it does this again. Like, that's the whole key. So hopefully you guys understand, like, I'm just tired of the bullshit. Like, I was talking to Scott today on the, the Skype, and I was like, you know, there's just so many people out there arguing just because they want to be right. Like, it's all about wanting to be right. I guarantee they're sitting with their girlfriends arguing because they need the last word so they can be right. As opposed to just being like, here's the deal, man. 
I don't know. I've tried keto. It doesn't do much for me. I've read the, the literature. I don't know. But I've also seen some other literature that says, yeah, it might work. So why don't you give it a try for like 16 weeks? You know, make sure everything is fucking nailed down. Track it all. Journal everything and see what happens at the end. Um, other than that, I don't really know what to say. But because that's what science does. Science goes, well, there's this, there's this. We're not really sure. So it needs further studying. At least I'm the one that, that out there. Basically, if I don't know, I say, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. Give it a shot. These motherfuckers. Nope. Science says this. Don't do it. Uh, that's pretty fucking dumb. So why don't you just literally sit back and do your own research, guys. Literally go out there and do the shit yourself. Dig into it. Google as many keywords as you can. Google whole fucking paragraphs. But the bottom line is, guys, everything these IF whammers and these fucking these calories in, calories out wing nuts say, there's a complete fucking opposite side of the story with thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people that would fucking disagree with what they say, even though a study backs them up. But the bottom line is we don't live in the computer. We don't live on a paper. We don't live in a study. We don't live in those wing nuts house. We live in the real world where real shit happens. So you know what? Stay in the real world. Biosuchetting at gmail.com. Leave comments down below, but don't fight. Biosuchetting.com's vlogs. Living in the real world bicep, and we are out.